Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my studio for another project. And yes, it's another beading project. I, I did promise it was a beading heavy month here on the channel and uh, there's a lot of sewing coming up, but right now we're diving into another necklace. And unlike the necklace I made earlier in the month, this one is a little bit simpler, a little bit more beginner friendly perhaps, and actually requires a less uh, wide variety of beads. So it's easier to find the materials for it and probably easier to get started with this sort of technique, doing something a little bit more on the simple side like this. But I have some absolutely gorgeous iridescent bronze beads beads to use for this design today, so we'd better go ahead and get started. And here we are above the beading mat. Today I'll be using some Beadalon beading wire thread stuff instead of the nylon thread I was using last time. That's because the weave of this necklace is a little bit more open, and to give the necklace, the choker part of the necklace that stands up along the neck structure, I needed something less floopy to work with. It also does mean that because this wire holds its shape perfectly well on its own, I do not need to use beading needles for this, so though I have two sitting here, I won't be using those. I'm starting with a piece of that that's about a yard long. The two main beads I'll be using to construct this next day are these size 4 Czech glass fire polished beads here in this matte bronze iridescent finish. It's like a matte bronze slash clear bead, but with an AB finish on it. They're absolutely delicious. They look even prettier in real life. You can't actually tell here in the footage how sparkly and how much of a velvet iridescence they have. They're gorgeous. And then I'll be using size 11 seed beads in again a Charlotte cut so they have a little facet on them that gives them a little bit of a sparkle in a nice kind of antique bronze colorway. And I will link both of these beads below along with the rest of the materials for this necklace. Now I am kind of making this pattern up as I go along here. This is the first one of this pattern I have made. I didn't have a actual pattern to reference. I was actually just looking at a necklace that I saw on Pinterest and trying to copy it as best I could without being able to see the back at all. So the back of this is the roughest bit and I did change it up a tiny bit in my next version, but you'll see the first version here today. But I will begin by threading on 16 of the bronze seed beads, then one of the size 4 fire polish beads sort of on the bottom thread here, and another 6 seed beads, and then I will lock this first set of beads with one of the size four. So lock that into a loop by putting both of the threads through one bead like so. This is the same technique that I was using to construct the entire intricate necklace that I did earlier in the month. However, we're just going to be making intersecting loops today a much easier pattern to keep track of and of course only two different sizes of beads. So it's a lot easier to keep your place in this design instead. Now for my top thread here, I'm going to string on 16 seed beads. And that's all that is happening on the top one there. Then I'm going to string on six seed beads, one size four, and another six seed beads for the bottom thread here, or what will become my bottom thread. And again, I will lock this loop together through another size four. So I'll string that size four on, put both threads through it to lock this loop into place. Pull on both of those, swing it around here. Bleh. Now I'm going to do a little quatrefoil dealio by stringing on one size four on each thread and again locking through a another size four. So we have this little quatrefoil that is created by those size four check glass beads. And once again, my top thread here is going to get 16 bronze seed beads. The bottom thread gets six seed beads, one size four, six seed beads, which is about equivalent to the same length as doing the 16 seed beads by themselves. So that's what the idea is there. And then once again, this next loop will be locked by a four. Then we'll do the quatrefoil again and on and on it goes all across the top of the necklace. I will go ahead and link to the necklace that I saw on Pinterest, like quite randomly. I actually lost this pin, like I closed the tab on accident and couldn't find it again because I had failed to save it for some reason. So I spent about an hour refinding this picture of this necklace when I was making this because I lost it halfway through and needed it to reference, which was of course extremely silly and yet also frustrating. I have it pinned in a couple different places now, so that never happens again. But I'm just gonna do that same pattern all the way across here. I have 14 loops total across my necklace. And here at the end, I actually, instead of putting my uh, two strings through a size four to lock the end of the ring, I put them through a crimp bead, crimped that down and then covered it with a crimp cover. Luckily the crimp cover uh, is like the same exact color as these seed beads. So it blends in pretty well. And I'll show you exactly what that process looks like later on in this making of here. But I'm going to feed on another length of my beading wire here. And this is where we'll anchor to begin the second row of circles that go back across the length of the necklace, which involves 16 seed beads along the outside, then a size four, then six more seed beads on both the top and bottom thread, and then locking through that size four fire polish bead again. And now to create the quatrefoil this time between the top and second row, I am going to need to thread on two of the fire polished beads and then go back through this bottom size four that is at the 
bottom of the top loop here. I'm going to go back through that, feed on one more size four, and then go back through the top of the loop that is in the second row. Hopefully with the next clip, you'll see what I mean more so than me being able to explain it because of course, this is a much more of a visual thing, let's face it. Um, but that's how I'm going to create this little quatrefoil in between the rows up here. In the second necklace I made, the blue one that I was wearing in the beginning of this video, I definitely forgot to do the quatrefoils between the rows like this. So you'll see that difference in the end when I show you both necklaces side by side. But once that top quatrefoil is done, that same thread gets another six beads before being locked in with the bottom thread that has the six, then one, four, and six. And yes, uh, once again, just, just watch what I'm doing. Do as I do, not as I say in this case, which is very rare. six seed beads on the bottom thread, then a size four and six more seed beads. Leave that to hang out for a second. Grab the top thread here, six seed beads, then two of the size four fire polish, thread those on like so. And then I'm going to go back through this bead that is at the bottom of the loop above us here, which it does take a little bit of finagling just because these are nice and tight, pulled nice and taut that is. Get that through there, one more fire polish bead, and then I will go back through the first one down here on this loop to create that little quatrefoil. Again, for lack of a better <laughs> design terminology word. Now this top thread still needs six more seed beads. Oh, I'm just pulling this tight with my plier real fast. There we go. Behave. Um, but yes, this top thread that just went through their quatrefoil needs six more seed beads like so before I can lock it with another size four with those other beads hanging out on the bottom thread to create this little ring, and I'll be doing this the same way all the way across for this second row. like so. And you can see at the very end on the left hand side in the second row, there's like a bigger bronze bead. That's because I ran out of small bead caps and I had to start using larger ones for where I was crimping this. So if you have smaller bead caps, they blend in with the seed beads better. Um, but with this, of course, unlike the nylon thread that I can just tie off, I have to crimp this wire. So uh, I can't just tie it in knots. It would not appreciate that. I'm sure the knots would come undone very quickly. So I have to crimp it instead because this wire has a lot more bounce and spring to it as compared to the nylon floopy thread that I was using for the other necklace. I'm going to start out this third row the same way that I did the last one. And I will just go ahead and copy everything all the way along across the necklace once again. Uh, this last row, I remembered to put a quatrefoil between the first loop and the rest, which just means that this necklace is slightly trapezoidal, which is fine because my neck gets slightly wider when it connects to my shoulders. So really, if anything, it makes this fit better, I think. And the stringing process is the same as the last row all the way across. And when I get to the other side, again, to close off this last loop, what I've been doing this entire time here is stringing both ends through a crimp bead. You can see it here because it is silver. I do prefer silver plated crimps because they tend to be stronger. Um, it's really kind of hard to find nice crimps, especially at stores, uh, unless you have a bead store in your area. Specialty bead shops usually do carry different crimps, but like the craft stores, Michaels and Joann's here in the US don't really carry nice crimps. I recommend getting the sterling silver plated ones there if you're going to get crimps there because um, although they are pricier, use a coupon, um, they are much stronger. So some of the base metal crimps are really not up to scratch, but I'm just using my crimp tool, pulling those two strings taut and going ahead and doing the two-step crimp on this crimping tool to crimp that down, hold my wires in place, I'll cut the excess away, and then I will cover this little silver crimp with a crimp cover here. Uh, this is just one way, if you only have one color of crimps on hand, which in my case are the silver plated, to make them match your project a little bit better, you can use crimp covers. They kind of look like a little clamshell that you can close in around your crimp here to hide it. Unfortunately, I only had these large bronze ones, but luckily they're kind of the same size as the size four, so they don't look too out of place, I think. Eh, it's not too bad. For me figuring out this necklace design, I think it works for this first one. Now for the bottom of this necklace, you could do whatever you wanted. You could make it long. You can add any kind of drapes 
or uh, flourishes or fringes from the bottom of this that you would like, or just keep it as a choker all on its own. I think it'd be quite pretty all on its own as well. I'm just going to string some fringes on, making quatrefoils out of every other loop along this bottom edge here, and stringing on beads in between using the seed beads, the size four um, fire polish beads, and then also these sort of feather shaped little dagger beads. I can link these below. I found these on Etsy where I find most of my beads because sadly here in Denver, anywhere south of Denver, there are no bead shops, at least not that I know of anymore. Uh, there used to be a dozen and now there are zero, which is a major bummer. So the only bead shops are kind of north of Denver or in the Boulder area in my um, neck of the woods or lack thereof, I guess. So I don't really have bead shops around me anymore, but luckily Etsy exists so I can get them delivered to my door, which is not so bad, but means I don't get to browse in person, which is a bummer. But for copying this exactly, if you'd like to, um, do reference the high res images that I will link below over on my blog to see exactly what I did here. Again, it's just stringing beads on, taking a few off and rearranging them if I don't end up liking it, just making it up as I go across here. So less of a pattern to follow here, much more of a creative moment in the process. And the concept behind making all of these sort of higher collared beaded necklaces that are very, I don't know, late Victorian or Edwardian inspired was probably sparked by watching too many old Dior couture runway shows from like the 90s when Galliano first started working there. And we all know Galliano disappointed us, but his design work for Dior remains absolutely delicious. So there were a lot of Edwardian inspired shows during his early tenure at Dior. And I've been watching a lot of those for inspiration on some sewing work I have coming up. And I ended up raving kind of Edwardian high collared jewelry. And clearly I have been experimenting with that lately. And when I got to the end of the strand, instead of connecting it to the main body of the necklace, I would have just tied it on if I was working with a nylon thread. Once again, I actually just crimped the ends of that to some jump rings that I can connect to the clasps that I'll add on to the back of the necklace in a moment here. And I'll make some danglies out of some head pins here. I did actually get some eye pins finally in this antique brass color so I don't have to turn both ends. I know, I need to get that automatic round end tooler that you guys told me about because I had never heard of it and it seems like an excellent innovation. So I need to grab one of those sometime. I'm going to attach some antique brass chain to the three loops on one side of the necklace. And then I'll use jump rings to attach some antique brass lobster class to the other three loops on the other side. So I can of course put this on, but have it be a little bit adjustable because it's easier to put the choker on if you have a little bit of excess to hold on to, um, especially if you want to make it quite tight. But of course, if you want to wear it looser, then you can. Um, I know some people don't like things up around their neck, but I, as I always say, I, I don't mind being um, in, in any pain for fashion. Um, I feel the same way about high heels, unless they're absolutely bone rearrangingly painful. I do have a pair of heels from Pleaser that are bone rearrangingly uncomfortable, which is unfortunate because they do make your foot look like a Barbie foot um, in like a good way, you know, but they are um, impossible. You cannot actually walk in those. The people who can wear like truly five, six inch heels are very impressive to me because sadly, I think my time for those has gone. Um, I used to be able to wear them in high school because I really didn't care about my feet hurting then. But now, now I'm older and less tolerant, I guess. But in general, I don't really have any sensory issues around wearables, whether it's um, jewelry or clothes or like fabrics touching my, me or anything like that. I don't really mind if something is slightly itchy or slightly weird. The only thing that bothers me, of course, is makeup, which is sad because we all know I love my sparkly eyeshadow and I'm not willing to give it up. So I just sadly have become allergic to makeup over the years. I'm actually also allergic to foundation and the whole shebang, the whole thing. Um, it, I'm sensitive to all of it now. So and people always say that I could wear all natural makeup, but they don't, it doesn't come in the fancy jewel beetle colors and uh, I need to look like an insect wing. So um, it's not gonna cut it for me, sadly enough. I'm just gonna have to stick with the stuff that bothers me and suffer for the look. Um, that's why I only put makeup on a couple times a month, actually. Um, the, my filming days are my glamorous days because those are the days I get to put makeup on, but usually it takes my eyes a couple of days to recover from being uh, like annoyed about makeup. So I don't wear it all the time. So if you ever see me out and about and I look like a gremlin, it's because I wish I could be wearing makeup, but I'm not. You can see here I have poured out some size six millimeter 
fire polish beads here that are the same exact color as the size fours I've been using, just for a little bit of a variation on my little dangles and teardrops going on here. I'm just going to turn a bunch of these beads on my matching antique brass head pins and then connect them at various points along the bottom here using some antique brass jump rings. But again, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just playing with it, putting them on, holding the necklace up to my neck. I have a mirror here on my desk so I can hold the necklace up, see if I like it, move things around, change things if I need to. So I'm just playing as I go along here, deciding what I want to do for this bottom fringe. I do want to go a little bit more traditional with the black version of this necklace that I need to make, because I definitely do want to make an all black version of this that looks almost like, you know, a gothic iron gate in a way. But I think I'll do some more traditional floops along the bottom of that one. And since I'm sitting here turning all these beads anyhow, here I am adding some size sixes on head pins to the ends of my chains for the back of the necklace being adjustable. Um, just to finish off the ends of those chains, I think it gives a nice punctuation mark on the end of the chains here to have little beads hanging down. You can actually have longer chains hanging down the back if you have like a backless dress, it would look really nice. But of course, me having to wear a bra, I never have a backless dress sadly enough. But since I'm here turning beads anyhow, I might as well turn a few extra lengths and make some earrings. I'm using a connector bar here. This is like for doing multi-strand bracelets and necklaces, but I think they work really well for earrings as well. So I have these three loop connector buddies here that I'm going to use to make some earrings like so. So I just have a size three and a size six on a head pin hanging from the bottom of these. And then I'm using various combinations of those sizes of beads here in the center on three pieces of wire to connect the two connectors. Oh no. And I do have the jump rings to help me assemble all of this as well. Lots of opening and closing of jump rings and turning of head pins going on here. And I'm sure my hands hurt afterwards because, again, while I am not sensitive to many things, this is one of the things that actually will flare up my hands weirdly. And I'm just like, suffer for the art. Hello, let's go. I don't want to hear any complaints from my humanity. Boring. And to finish these, I just need to find some hooks or ear wires somewhere around here. I managed to find some ear wires, so I have my earrings finished up here. I try and buy a tiara cast, which is a like jewelry, uh, like findings and metal bead company. Uh, make antique brass ear wires that are nimodium, nimo, nimobium, nimobium, some sort of strange element that is uh, not reactive. Um, so it's very good for like sensitive ears and stuff like that. So I try and buy those fancier antique brass ear wires when I can. And here is my necklace. So let me see if I can get this buddy on. I just love the color of these beads. They're such a pretty finish. It's like this matte iridescent bronze rainbow bead that I just love. And I do want to make another one of these. And of course, again, all jet black beads. I'm just waiting for the uh, wire cord to come in. I grabbed some from Amazon um, so that I can make another one of these in the size four check glass jet beads with black sparkling Charlotte cuts. So very similar to this, just an all black. I need to make another one. And again, I will have all the materials for this linked below. And of course, close up images of my finished necklace. So you can go ahead and copy the pattern exactly if you would like to. I promise I'll be back with a lot more sewing soon. It's just, I've been a little bit distracted doing some bead work. It's actually my sort of hobby and break from all the sewing I needed to do. So, you know, uh, I can't really take an actual rest moment. But thank you as always for watching today. I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.